good morning uh, thanks for joining um, so as we are going to have our week long program the update finding factor uh, my name is Kanti Esibel Lovin from the financial management and the investment readiness officer at J Venture Capital so first and foremost um, without wasting much time I would like to introduce to you who J Venture um, Capital is as a company what we do as a fair and also introduce to you the MasterCard program, uh, which is the MasterCard COVID-19 Resilience and Recovery Program. Um, so I would like to start with my slides. Um, thanks for joining us, I mentioned. Um, so as the title shown there, Finding factor. Uh, we'll be having this long, uh, this one week long program in different um, department in JABC, um, which is being started from the financial management and investment readiness department. We also have a representation by the legal department, also on business strategy, business development, account and audit. During this program, um, that's the one we call program, which is from the 24th, which is today, the 29th of January. So, like I mentioned, I would like to begin with J Venture Capital, who we are as a fair, what we do, and also introduce to you the MasterCard COVID 19 Resilient and Recovery Program. So, J Venture Capital. It's a management consultant firm uh, where we have dedicated in-house legal financial management, management consultant, audit and investment readiness department set up to provide end-to-end -end business development and then project management and investment readiness support and solutions for MSMEs. G Venture Capital also has an extensive work of professional consultants with varied background in water, sanitation and hygiene, that's wash and renewable energy, agriculture, manufacturing, um, technology. We have works in oil and gas and then also many uh, MSME development programs. Uh, with a strong governance and market driven theory of change combined with over 10 years in this industry and experience of TAP, we continue to support department and development financial institutions such as MasterCard, whereby we have in this project with them, the MSME COVID-19 Recovery and Resilient Project. JVC is, in, is incorporated and also in good standing, possessing all the requirements as required by law to operate as a management consulting firm. Our services, which is business development and restructuring, project development, project management, audit and account, and then investment readiness support. So we support businesses through strategy, helping them develop the various scenarios, understanding how it means to grow your business, helping them improve on their bottom line, that's their revenue, and then also helping them scale as a business whereby they can move from one area to another. So for instance, you want to set up your business in another country, you want to set up your business in another region. If you want to grow, how do you structure your business for you to have ease of scale? Um, on the background for the MasterCard COVID-19 Resilient and Recovery Program, which aims at supporting over 10,000 MSMEs, that's the micro, small and medium, enterprises also have to be successful uh, successfully navigate the COVID-19 pandemic and develop resilient for future shocks because possibly there are other external factors that may affect these businesses as they grow and it could be both internal and external so for instance as COVID-19 hit some businesses had to go under because they have not built the various components and tools and system and structures to be able to have these resilience. So for instance, having available capital 
when the business is in crisis or when they are cash trapped, having the various strategies in terms of having a plan when there are issues with regards to COVID-19 and or external issues when they are being impacted by it. Also even having some scenarios around how would the business operate if, for instance, a natural disaster is, is going to happen or is being affected in a particular area. So this is key for businesses to be able to keep that in mind whenever they are growing their business, having scenarios around how they could develop resilience around these areas. Some of the services JABC is providing under this project includes financial structuring and financial modeling, which would deal with building cash flows, um, helping businesses to understand the key cost lines, having to improve on their revenue, looking at things that have a lot of impact on their cost structure to be able to see how they can grow their business whilst managing these issues. We're looking at financial review and audit, We're looking at internal controls and bookkeeping. So we've realized that some businesses don't keep their books. So they don't even know exactly where cash or their money has been moving towards and how to manage these things. And then also we have um, financial policies and procedures. We, we've realized that some companies don't have a form of policies and also procedures when it comes to cash spending. So for instance, there are companies that the CEO thinks that the capital of the money is theirs. And then also we have credit and risk management and then training. So for instance, the defining factor is part of the trainings we do to help or support MSMEs across various industries and then expertise. So the following are some of the program partners and their roles um, do, uh, involving the MasterCard Resilience, COVID-19 Resilience and Recovery Program. So we have uh, Pixera Global, which is an implementing partner providing coordination, stakeholder management, and also monitoring quality control, and then also capacity building. We also have MDF West Africa, which is supporting this project with digitization, online and virtual resources, and then also provision of other business development services support. And then we have the venture capital, financial management, um, financial structuring, modeling, review, financial review, and then bookkeeping, financial policies, risk um, management and trainings, as I aforementioned. Also, we are looking at Scale Up Africa. It's also a program partner on the MasterCard COVID-19 Resilient and Recovery Program, and whereby they are also focusing on business development services with a gender and youth lens, targeting a great artisans and also community-based MSMEs, which is the micro, small, medium enterprises with a high rate of female particip uh, participation. Sorry. Also, we have Global Mames, which is also a technical training focusing on specific areas around gender equality, ethical production, smart in uh, incentives, quality control, goal setting, and also self-care. Uh, moving on, um, these are the targeted MSMEs that we focus on as a firm, that's JV Venture Capital and also under the project, MasterCard uh, Foundation Resilient and Recovery Program due to the impact of COVID-19. So we have Micro, which is vulnerable businesses, these are companies that have between one to five employees with um, revenue yearly less than $10,000. So, I mean, we target both very micro businesses, which are very vulnerable, whereby the uh, impact of COVID-19 has been tremendous on them. We are also looking at micro businesses, uh, micro small size businesses, whereby they have employees around the numbers of six to 30 with revenue less than $200,000, $100,000, sorry, in a year. And then we have 30 uh, plus employees, which is for the medium-sized businesses with revenue over $200,000 in a year. So moving on, before I introduce, um, so this is some key information I wanted us to address ourselves with in terms of the project that is being undertaken at the moment. And as a firm, that's J Venture Capital, what we do. So I would like to start with um, today's presentation on um, financial man management and investment readiness and also capital raising. So 
without introduction, um, I would like to state that um, the notion that difficulty in raising or assessing financial capital um, due to the deficiencies in the supply of capital may not be completely true. Um, however, there is no recognition that access to capital can also be hindered by existence of weaknesses on the demand side. Uh, that, just to draw some light on this, um, we understand that capital in Africa is a bit of an issue. That's availability of capital for small and micro businesses and medium-sized businesses to access is a bit difficult. So that means there is low appetite for availability of these capital for entrepreneurs, but which is true to some extent, but that's just not the case because you will also find out that through engagement and also to assessing businesses over time that investment readiness in regards to these businesses is not available. So you find businesses that don't have um, documentation, don't keep their books. So you can really even understand what's, what's the kind of revenue they are generating each year. And these are some of the businesses that have been in existence for 10 years. They don't have policies. Um, the CEO's account is also the business account. So when you look at all these structures and systems in these businesses, you would realize that some of these businesses are not invest, investment ready. Because there is um, this popular statement that goes that capital moves towards where there is opportunity. And for these opportunity to be existent, there need to be these investment readiness for these businesses to be able to access this capital. So clearly, if there is demand side deficiency, then there will be that will comprom uh, compromise the effectiveness of the supply side. Just like I mentioned, money will definitely move towards areas where there is much opportunity, and then there are systems and controls in place for capital to be deployed and the usage of capital is evident for growth. Also, either it will prevent the fund from being fully invested or it will make a bad investment. So like I mentioned, if somebody is to bring in capital into a business and the person doesn't have a clear understanding of even the usage of funds, the money can be diverted into other streams whereby the CEO can keep some of the cash. So what the capital was possibly intended for we may not be achieved. So beyond just being having a supply side deficiency, whereby capital availability is a bit low in this particular region, which is Africa and Ghana to be specific, they also have some deficiency on the other side, whereby invest, investment readiness is not available for these businesses to be able to assess this capital. And that is why we are having this particular training so that we can prepare businesses to these trainings to be investment ready. Moving on, investment readiness with those with use in the context of raising external capital, this focuses on the preparation of some of the most essential questions that investors would most likely ask the entrepreneur during their due diligence or pre-due diligence stage. Important, importantly, dealing with systems and also structures that the firms may need to adhere to, to be able to attractive to be able to be attractive to new capital and then also measures pre uh, predictive growth that affects concern and um, growing concern and also culture. So like I mentioned, um, to be able to raise external capital, businesses need to be investment ready. And this investment readiness will deal with having to have the answers that investors would need in terms of the questionings they may have before they make available capital to these businesses. And it is key that entrepreneurs have a fair idea of what these questions possibly could be, That's which will happen during the due diligence stage, whereby investors would have engagement with these business owners. And then also um, during the stage before capital is made available to these, uh, these business owners. So that is the def definition of investment readiness. And moving on to the component of investment readiness, we do it equity aversion, investability, and also presentational failures. So um, a, 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 a deep dive into that would mean that um, equity aversion, which is usually um, an attitude which is reflected by most business owners um, who prefer that um, processes of raising capital feels like they are giving away part of their businesses 
two anniversary, which to some extent is true, but it is key that for businesses to be on the track of growth, they need to be beyond just they having these kind of ownership. People that come into uh, the company, bring new ideas, bring new strategies, also bring to the client and potential um, investors for their own personal growth. And it's something that we also realize a lot in Africa, that whenever you are engaging, let's say, an agric farmer who says that um, there's a need or you you try to explain to the person that there's a need for you to scale as a business, to be able to see much revenue or for growth. And then the person will say, oh, this is a family business we've been doing over 10, 20 years. And during those 10 and 20 years, nobody has raised any external capital. So we don't need it. And during engagement with banks and financial institutions, you realize that even to some extent, some of these banks do chase some of these uh, business owners to even make available capital. This um, availability of capital for sure is going to help these businesses grow, but simply because of equity aversion, whereby there is already a built-in culture around how they see external capital, which could be debt or credit, and then even to some extent equity financing have impact on um, one, investment readiness and also businesses ability to also raise capital and then we we would like to also touch on investability which deals with high rejection rate of business angels and venture capital firms clearly in the case that most businesses that seek external finance do not meet the require, requirement of external um, investors so being investable is key for you to be able to raise capital and like i have been uh, i have mentioned um, earlier businesses need to have the understanding that investors need to see certain key things before they will make money available to you it could be that you may be making the highest level of revenue as a business it could mean that you sell almost two hundred thousand of goods every single month or every single week or every single day but then it is key that investors coming in may have this understanding that you have the structures in place, you have the systems in place, you are just basically investment ready before capital will be made available to them. So it is key as a business owner that before you move into having to even begin engagement with the investors, you prepare yourself for that investment, which would I think we would discuss um, uh, moving on from here. So being investable is key and then also um, having to deal with the culture of um, we having to have, let's say, a family business that has been in existence for 10 years, so we don't need any external capital. Knowing very well that making available capital for such a business may support their growth, and then also sometimes presentational failures. So some companies may be investment ready in terms of keeping on track um, documentation, keeping on track systems, keeping on track, meeting the key deliverables to be attractive to investors. Sometimes how um, these key information are being presented to an investor is important. And I think for the industry, it has been understood that investors don't spend so much time in terms of engaging um, business owners. So between an hour, between let's say 10 or 15 or 20 minutes, having to have that time to engage investors, there is key that what is most critical and important to investors is being touched on. So for instance, before you even start engaging certain investors, you should know that these investors are much more interested even in the industry you find yourself in, so that you don't waste much time in those engagements. So when you look at the various venture capital or private equity firms, most of them have an investment thesis, which is the kind of industry they invest in, the kind of check size they give out, and all these key information. So if the investor, uh, if the business owner knows that, oh, if I'm going to engage this particular institution, they do have, uh, let's say, an industry whereby I find myself in. So sometimes you look at, let's say, water, sanitation, and hygiene, which is an industry that um, a particular institution or venture capital and financial institution focuses on. Um, then you know that, okay, I'm also in this space. What's the kind of check size they give up? So let's say they don't write anything below Two hundred thousand dollars, and then these are the key indicators to look at. So you prepare yourself before you even begin engagement with these investors. If you're looking at raising external capital, 
moving on um equity susceptibility which is um, dealing with two of them which is mainly focusing on attitude towards equity finance so for instance you find that high level aversion towards equity finance with fear of losing control of business and ownership is very um, evident in africa and ghana to be specific so sometimes when you engage business owners or even as a business owner mostly you ask yourself for instance um, somebody has made available capital and says oh i want to own 10 percent of your business for some they see this as oh i'm giving out control of my business and then some some in some cases we've seen business owners who have literally lost control of their business due to external capital which came in whereby a boss structure how it is how the deal was actually arranged to have long-term impact on these businesses whereby the ceo or the business owner may possibly lose control so that is one and also lack of information on various funding options available so sometimes you also realize that business owners don't have a fair idea of the available financing or funding options for them so um, some don't even know um, what's the equity availability financing for them in ghana and um, some of them don't even have a fair idea of what are the various private equity of uh, venture capital or financing institution like bank savings and loans and microcredit and uh, the kind of product they even have or let's say msmes and also some don't have any idea of what are the grants availability for them and then also we have convertible notes whereby um, an investor can bring in capital and then invest in your business and then whereby he could make an option for um, being an equity owner even though the initial agreement could begin with debt finance i think we will do much more in that uh, going forward so there is an alternative funding availability for entrepreneurs for different appetites and principles around building their venture so like i mentioned some businesses um, don't even have any idea of where to go to if they want to raise capital for their business the kind of industry they find themselves in and then who is available to do this deal with them also in terms of investment um, investors investment criteria and parameters um, as being described it's key that business owners just beyond finding themselves in that investment readiness they have a fair idea of how the capital market or capital um, the availability of um, external funding is being structured in the market so it is key that most of these investors have um, a fit whereby they make available money or capital or finance to businesses in specific sec uh, sectors of operation so some uh, venture capital only invest in let's say tech companies some venture capital only invest in let's say um, wash some venture capital only invest in let's say renewable some individual investors that's people with money to invest in businesses have specific areas they focus on even for some of the financing institutions currently also have product fit especially for different sectors also the kind of size of investment these businesses are looking and then what level or what stage this particular business is in and then also the region where the business is located so for some uh, um, um, financing institutions across africa focus on very specific areas so some may look at the southern part of africa for their investment some looking at the northern part of africa some look at the uh, west african area whereby they invest capital in so as you could see so for the goodness of it it's key that the business owners know that okay this particular investor is looking at what stage of, of my business that i'm currently in and then who is willing to write me a check also looking at the sector so for instance are you in um, water sanitation hygiene are you in renewable or are you in oil and gas and who are the various investors that are willing to write me a check or that are willing to make available capital for me to invest in my business and also what are the current uh, what are the sizes in terms of investment that these businesses um, that these investors invest in so we could look at one maybe for instance you're looking at raising two hundred thousand dollars it's not every investor that is going to write you that size of check 
because some of them just uh, write, let's say, $10,000 or so $50,000, and that's the highest they go. So we have uh, one like uh, micro traction, which invests between 10000 to 50000 investment in small and startup businesses. So for such a company, engaging them as an as a business owner, especially if you're looking at um, raising, let's say, $200,000, that'll be more like a waste of time because they may not be able to do such a size in terms of check and then also the location of your business. So for business owners, you need to understand that engaging these institutions, which run from the private equity angel investors, financing institutions, you need to have a fair idea of your location of business and whether or not these institutions are willing to do business with you. So for instance, some microcredit don't go beyond their areas, uh, area of focus. So for instance, if you are located in a and engaging, let's say microcredit and microfinancing institution in both region, that also looks like just a waste of time because the, finance, uh, the that particular financing institution may not be interested in your area or business location. So this deals with um, understanding the criteria of investors allow for investors, uh, entrepreneurs to narrow down to investors who are more likely to do a deal with them. So what I would even advise is if, for instance, you are a business owner and you're looking at raising the standard capital, you have to have a list of various investors and then you start marking out, okay, for instance, size of business. Maybe you're a micro business, maybe you're a small size business looking at raising uh -huh. 100,000 cities. So that's a scenario. And then you are located currently in Accra. So initially you, you can begin from, okay, what type of investment are you looking at? Are you looking at debt? Are you looking at equity? Or are you looking at a convertible? And then you have a list of investors that you would list out and say, these investors may be looking at putting capital in my business. Then after that, you start um, decreasing the lines. So for instance, okay, this particular investor does not look at, uh, does not invest in my sector. For instance, if I mean, water, sanitation, and hygiene. They may be doing just investment in education. Then you take that person out, and then you start decreasing the lines. And then from there, you'll be able to narrow down the number, let's say a few of these investors that look at the size of your business, that look at the sector of your business, that look at the size of your, the investment and also location. And then moving on to some screening of business after missing investment uh, parameters. So ha having been able to narrow down the various investors or institutions that are looking at doing business with you, it is key that um, you understand the various um, parameters that you need to meet before having engagement with these investors. So the following are some of the reasons why investors would re reject an investment opportunity even before meeting investors' investment criteria and parameters. So after having a fair understanding of how these investors, um, the kind of size of business they look at, the kind of um, investment they do, the kind of sector they find themselves in, and also the business location, it is key that the entrepreneur have a clear understanding of these things before they even begin the engagement with them. So you are looking at weakness in entrepreneur margin and management team. So these um, key, key focuses Will be explained further in the subsequent slides so just going to sound on them marketing and market uh, market related focuses which is could have flawed or incomplete marketing strategies and then financials so we are looking at past financials performances we could also deal with the forecast which is being unrealistic in terms of people may say they are going to make 10 20 million dollars uh, within not showing evidence of what's their approach or what is their strategy on achieving this particular goal. You're looking at business strategy, which will deal with your uniqueness as a, as a business, what's your differentiating factors, and then also product. And then you're looking at growth strategy and then your ease of scale. So your ease of scale is, as a business, can you be able to set up almost the same business or your growth in um, another country, let's say in Burkina Faso, in let's say um, Cote d'Ivoire, let's say Kenya, South Africa, Nigeria, as a business, it's key because for each investment that's coming in, the investor is looking at how can your business grow to make much more money, and which will deal with moving beyond the current location of your business. That's maybe setting another office in Nigeria and other countries. So, in terms of 
invest investor readiness checklist um this is key for almost every business it doesn't matter the size of your business you need to keep in mind that you have these uh, checklists that as a business owner so for, it doesn't matter whether you're raising money from your friend so even from your friend the person would want to find out whether your company has been registered so do you have a, a company registration do you have a company profile um have you do you have the certificate of incorporation and also even for instance some will look at whether you have the regulatory and then legal licenses to operate and then so for instance if you are dealing with an industry where you need to um, have some license from various agencies you need to have this before you'll be able to operate or else you will just be there one time in your office and then your business will be called you could be taken to court and this can have a lot of impact in terms of um, your business so sometimes you can be fine whereby even the capital that's supposed to be invested in different sectors or different parts of your business would have to be to be used for legal costs and sometimes some of these um, fines so it's key for a business owner to have these um these licenses to be able to pray and then also business environment and operating model so i would like to list these things out so that you can keep in mind and then also if you want to um, write it down you can also do that so that you are clear that as a business owner this is key for me if i'm looking at being investment ready and also it's also key for me if i'm even looking at raising external capital and it's also key for me if i want to be compliant with the uh, regulatory environment i find myself in so first and foremost you're looking at company information a certificate of incorporation certificate to uh, commerce business you're looking at uh, company registration you're looking at list of subsidiaries and then associates associates if it's applicable so it's not every business that has subsidiaries which is key you're looking at company profile brochures and website you're looking at milestones and awards so as a business what are your key milestones where would you see your company in the next year in the next two years okay what are the awards that you've received as a business so for instance they have some awards which are available for some um in, in even in ghana in africa among others whereby some companies have won these awards so it's also key um as a business owner not to necessarily focus on having to have these kind of awards but then it also confirms to you that possibly you are doing something right as a business owner so you are looking at also legal and regulatory so under that we have business licensing and then other operating permit we have tax identification number we are looking at also tax clearance certificate and then also evidence of SNIT payment so both tier one and tier two then we are looking at annual returns so filing of your annual returns so under governance and also management we are looking at organizational chart you're looking at schedule of all shareholders and also you are looking at schedule of directors and then external advices also we are looking at schedule of key management staff a board charter and also a schedule of st staff strength and competitive landscape so it is key that for you to be able to be investment ready these are things you have to focus on as a business owner and then also there are also online tools that you could use to be able to develop some of these documentations and also there are um, consultants that are also available in the market so JVC. Uh, could help you in terms of support you to be able to um, be investment ready and having to meet all these key checklists um, as a business owner. So there are available tools that you could use to be able to find yourself on the other side, which is moving from um, having um, gaps in your business into being investment ready, where you have the right systems, you have the right structures, and also the right master uh, mindset for growth. And then as a business owner, know where and who to engage for your growth. And then we have the business environment and operating model. So description of business processes, sales register of, let's say, your top 10 client or your customer sales agreement with top 10 client, purchase agreement, if there is any. And then you're looking at also under decision and um, decision making and strategy having a strategic plan or business plan, um, knowing what, if you are to raise the capital, what you're going to use the money for. So you have to have a utilization of funds. Stock. So for instance, if you're going to raise 200,000 Ghana cities, so 200,000 200, Ghana cities, possibly let's say 80,000 is going to move into purchase uh, of a machinery. Let's say 120,000 is going to be used for working capital. But you have to show evidence in terms of building a cash flow to support that if this machinery comes in this is how our revenue 
of production size is going to increase. And then in support of a purchase order, which is going to show to investors that, oh, you're going to buy this machinery. You're going to um, have this available money for working capital, buying off raw materials for these machineries to be able to produce our, our product for the market. And then we have these of the case agreement or purchases order for these products that's going to be produced between let's say three to six months and that's what the usage of funds is going to be so that is also key as a business owner to have that and then also on financials and budget so we have audited financial statement we have annual budget we have quarterly management account you need to have your trial balance and also your three months um, bank um, statement so we have credit history which is so for instance, if you are to engage financial institutions and you also have um, credit with another bank, um, that could be sometimes a problem because there should be a um, key understanding between you that even before you start engagement, it has to be clear with the banks that, oh, possibly I have, um, let's say, a liability with another bank. But if maybe you keep it from them and then they, will, uh, they do their checks and they realize that you have liabilities with another institution, it could have an impact on your possibility of raising capital. And then we have contingency, uh, contingent liabilities, internal audit function, also asset register. So with every asset that's been purchased, having a register or, or embodying on the asset, that for instance, you have this particular asset, let's say table or chair and a condition, boarding with possibly a code of it being in ownership of this particular company and it's having the asset register on it. We're looking at also governance and management. So that's having board minutes if you do have a board evidence of performance review periodic evaluation of board members asset to register clearly rating corporate governance policies code of ethics whistleblower policy conflict of interest and also a succession plan um under control environment and policies you have business continuity plans anti-terrorism and then policies and procedures so moving on to target the various key things i mentioned early on on What's key for business owners to know that I need to put or structure my business, having these things in mind, if I want to be investment ready to be able to assess external capital. So first and foremost, the expertise of, um, of this particular business has to be key in terms of knowing that before you'll be able to move to, let's say, oil and gas, your management team needs to have a clear expertise in that particular area. So you can't, let's say, have a background in one specific area, let's say, in education, and then you intend to move to oil and gas. You could possibly do that, but then even on your management, you need to still have people with technical know-how in this particular industry to be able to survive. So investment uh, investors are, are very keen on knowing that this person has the expertise to be able to execute whatever he says is going to execute. So it is much easier for people with, let's say, background, educational background, um, experience in that particular space to be able to raise capital as compared to people that have probably um, jumped different industries to move to um, to move to um, a new a new industry to be able to raise capital. We're looking at also personal quality in terms of the integrity, the passion, and the commitment of the entrepreneur. So investors also are keen to see that this person has some passion, have some integrity, and the commitment to make sure that every goal, every goal that he's setting is being able to achieve it. So this will come from having a clear understanding of what has the company owner been able to build over time, and then also having a clear understanding that, okay, these are the goals you did set from the beginning and you've been able to achieve these goals. And then integrity is also key because if the person gives you money and then you divert these funds, the person needs to know from the very beginning that you have the integrity to say, I'm going to spend this money on this. And that's exactly what you're going to do. And then the track record of the entrepreneur. So um, previously successful entrepreneurs, it's much easier for them to be able to raise capital as compared to um, individuals who are just possibly new or don't have any track record in that particular space. So for instance, let's say a business owner um, built a successful business, was able to, let's say, sell the business to an entrepreneur, uh, to sell the business to an investor, or was able to sell the business to someone. Um, and then the person continues to build another business. It's much easier for such a person 
to engage investors and easily raise money as compared to somebody who's possibly new in that particular space. And then also the credibility of the management team. So if let's, for instance, you have a management team whereby they are not credible, um, um, they don't have any form of integrity, and then also formally have engaged in certain, um, in something wrong or things that have affected them legally. When you have such people in your management team, it could deter or it could push in, um, investors away from investing in your, in your business. And then also having unrealistic expectation and also being overly optimistic. It's key for any entrepreneur to be optimistic, but then being overly optimistic could have impact on the goals that you intend to set and whether or not you'll be able to achieve those goals. Also moving on to marketing and market related factors. So quality of optics and also go to market strategy. And then we have flawed or incomplete marketing strategies and then a uniqueness of product. So it's key that whatever product you're bringing into the market and already if you're in the market, um, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, whatever product you are, you are possibly bringing for, let's say it could be new or it could be, it could be as an alternative to the already available product you have. It should have some form of uniqueness in terms of usage, in terms of market target, among others, and also a flawed or incomplete market uh, marketing strategy. So, for instance, how you may even profile your customers or profile your consumers is key for you to even have a fair understanding of how do you even market this product to them. How do you intend to convert uh, your potential clients into customers, which is which is key for any entrepreneur, entrepreneur or business owner to know. Um, in terms of financials, you need to have a past performance. If you've already been in business over a, a period, let's say three to five years, your past perfor uh, performance is key to be able to inform how you may even perform going forward. And also, you should have realistic forecasts as a business owner to say, uh, we did two million last year and then looking at how we are structuring our marketing we may have to we may be able to go 30 percent 40 percent 50 percent or let's say possibly 100 percent you know in the coming year um some may even say that you're going to go a thousand percentage uh it's possible for a business to go at a thousand percent in one year but is it realistic as a business owner or for most businesses is it something that's very realistic so if it's, as a business owner you inform your investor that oh we are going to do um, 10 times what we did last year um it, it will make the investor a bit skeptical about whether or not you'll be able to achieve it it's also it's also key to keep records and also internal controls so if an investor comes he wants to see that you have some documentation you keep track of your financing because um, to be able to show growth of even whether the business is performing um, in terms of increasing revenue or improving on the bottom line, there should be data to show. So if there is no availability of data, that could have impact on the um, business owner to be able to raise capital. Also, when the person has a poor profit potential as compared to associated risk. So a business may be able to raise, um, you may be able to have high level revenue but then also a very thin profit. So a company can make, let's say, $10 million, but we just have profit per se, profit of, let's say, 100,000. Um, this can also have impact on the ability for such a person to be able to, or such a business owner to be able to raise a standard capital because um, investors know that their payout is usually on the bottom line. Let's say you're after your EBITDA um, payment of interest among others. What is remaining is possibly paid out as dividend to them. So if you also are a business owner trying to assess funding or assess capital from financial institutions, they need to know that you have the capacity in terms of your cash flow to be able to pay off um, your interest, which will be accrued over time. So beyond just being able to increase your revenue as a business, you need to be able to also improve on your EBITDA or your profit or your net cash flows to be able to support any form of dividend payment or possibly any form of interest payment that would um, accrue over time with um, a debt or a financial institutions that the company or the entrepreneur will be engaging. Also looking at business strategy and plan, it's key that um, the business owner have a credible market information. So for instance, the market you find yourself in, what's the size of the market, what's your time? So the total addressable market, you're looking at uh, what's the, your target in terms of focus, and then also 
what's the information and a clear understanding of that particular industry, uh, which is key and has to be informed very much clearly in your business plan. Also, you are looking at um, having a lack of business focus. So some businesses intend to do almost everything. So they are, today they are doing a production of oil, tomorrow they are doing soap, the third day they are possibly doing consultancy, and then on the fourth day they are possibly doing something in, let's say, um, cosmetics and um, other industries. So it's important that as a business owner, you have a business focus. You, can, you want to do this. Um, you could still have different lines, but then this is where your business focus is. And then maybe you can have add-ons as the business grow. You have operating and also highly competitive market. So sometimes when the business finds itself in an industry whereby you find too many players, that could have impact on its uh, potential growth over time. So because of that, it may deter investors from saying you find yourself in a market whereby it is difficult for your next five to 10 years growth to even look at, let's say, 20% year on year. So which will have impact on the person having to have the um, capacity or, or capability of raising external capital. The, you need to also have a unique selling point as a business. And then also you need to keep um, records and then internal control. So having a unique selling point is key. Having been able to keep uh, records and your internal controls is also key. Now, beyond just having to do all these necessary systems and structures or putting them in place, um, how this is presented to an investor is also very key. Now, when you have a poor pitch or presentation of business to an investor, it could have a really huge impact on whether or not you'll be able to raise external capital. So you could have a clear um, focus as a business, draft a business plan with all the needed market information, keep record your past performances of good, and all these key indicators may be on point. But how you present this to an investor is also key. So um, any, any business owner need to also improve on their presentational skill. So if you are to meet an investor to present to them um, some of these systems that you've put in place, which is showing growth for your company, you'll be able to, one, design properly how the presentation is going to look and then properly present to them about your business, which can also have huge impact in terms of your ability to raise capital. Um, so some key indicators include failure to make a business case and then also demonstrating the need for the product. So you should be able to communicate clearly because if you are not able to sell to an investor, how would you be able to sell to a customer? Because investors are more likely to be interested in businesses that are possibly doing well. So from the very get go, they are interested in investing in a business that's performing or doing very well. So if you're not able to even convince an investor, how are you going to be able to convince a customer to purchase your product? So which is key. Also explaining the benefit of the product to the investor. So you have to be able to tell the investor, okay, this is the pain point I'm trying to solve. And then this is going to help present to let's say a million, that's the total addressable market or 2 million or 10 million if your business is able to go, into, if your business is able to go at this particular stage or to this particular level. So which is also very key um, for the business. So these are some of the sources of funding available to business owners. So as I initially mentioned, some of the issues that business owners have in raising external capital of is due to their understanding of what are the potential available, um, available capital that is really available for me to be able to raise money for to, to grow my business, to improve my bottom line in revenue. First, we will deal with the debt financing, which is loans, which can be accepted from the bank, savings and loans, among other institutions. Um, we have lines of credit, we have peer-to-peer -peer lending, we have invoice financing. So for instance, a business may have an invoice from, let's say, um, another business, whereby the supply goes to them, but then they have the invoice showing that these goods have been supplied to them. Using that invoice, they can borrow at the back of the invoice, whereby um, the financial institution can take a percentage of what the invoice amount is and then uh, make available that capital to the business. Also, we have guaranteed and non-guaranteed loans. So we have some loans that would be guaranteed with um, a possible asset from the business or a collateral. And then we have um, some loans that you don't need any form of collateral to be able to assess it. 
So on the equity side, we have pre-seed, we have seed, we have post-seed, we have series A, B, C, D, and we have private listing and initial public offering. So to each stage of your business, so for instance, your pre-seed potentially will be your first raise as a business. Uh, possibly you may have available MVP that is uh, a minimum viable product, which is ready to be able to present to investors and say, hey, investors, this is what I've built. This is what it can do. And then there is a market availability for it. So when you're able to raise capital of that sort, to be able to build your business into production or to build your business into moving such a minimum viable pro uh, product into a product where it can be purchased by um, your customers and your consumers. Then you can further raise a seed whereby, which will be more key for your growth, which deals rich from C to your post C to your series A, series B, series D. And then we have both private listing and initial public listing. So for initial public listing, as we do on the Ghana Stock Exchange, and also let's say the New York Stock Exchange, which is you go to um, investors publicly dealing with some of um, the agencies around security and exchange commission, um, and also um, the Ghana Stock Exchange and say, hey, I want to publicly list my company for anybody with um, for anybody to come and purchase shares of my company. And we also have private listing, whereby it's being listed privately to investors. And then we have convertible notes. So convertible notes, which deals with um, having engagement with an investor who can say that, hey, I'm going to make less available 50,000 CDs for you um, at an interest rate of a particular percentage. And then looking at how the business is growing, the investor could say, come back and have an engagement with you around. Okay, so potentially your business seems to be growing at the rate whereby I would want to partake in terms of having an equity portion of your business. And from there, you could become partners and then there could be share in terms of um, strategy. There could be bringing in of client from both sides in terms of the partner and then also the investor and then the business owner. Um, so from the sources of funding, we move on to the institutions of funding. So for micro businesses, we have microfinance institutions, cooperative unions, you have rural banks, you have peer-to-peer -peer lending, whereby you could have, um, you could speak with a friend, um, can you can you lend me some money um, for me to improve on my business? And then you could, so we have microcredits and then friends and family, engaging friends and family, and then also into investors. And then we have availability of um, some institutions for funding for small and medium businesses. So we are looking at savings and loans, commercial banks, private equity, grant access, um, initial public offering. So one, you could have uh, um, engagement with savings and loans, looking at, look at the various product they have, and then also some commercial banks, private equity grants, and then initial public offering. Um, I would like to um, put clearly out there that going at a higher rate can have serious impact on business operation and cash flow. So it's important that before a business owner assesses any form of debt or loan, there should be various scenarios on how the loan would be paid back and strong purchase order or off the case agreement to show strong cash flow and confidence of repayment. So um, looking at the capital structure and capital availability in Ghana specifically, um, most access to these kind of loans come at a very high interest rate. So for an, before an, um, a business owner goes out to assess some of these um, loans, they need to have a clear understanding of um, how they're going to pay the money back. So do they have a purchase order to support that? Do they have um, off tickets agreement to show that they have a strong uh, potential revenue going to come in to be able to uh, repay the interest that will be accrued on the loan? So it's key for business owners to have these scenarios built into um, their cash flow before they go in for some of these external capital, specifically looking at the loans and then the interest rate that's available in Ghana's market. Um, moving on, so these are some of the uh, primary funding requirements that every business needs to um, focus on. Um, it could be micro, it could be small, it could be, um, it could be medium. So for that, at least you should have um, a business plan in place, an asset valuation report, 
to really tell what's the size of your business at this particular point if somebody wants to make available equity finance because the person will come looking at having a percentage of your business as ownership so you should be clear that oh if the person is bringing me two hundred thousand cities um that shows 20 percent of my company if the person is bringing me five hundred thousand cities per my valuation report it shows let's say 50 percent of the company um so unaudited financial um statement also um, cash flow and also the usage of funds so as part of the requirement you need to show that so for your financials in your past performances you need to show okay i did this amount of revenue last year that amount of revenue last year and then a cash flow to show that okay in the next coming years as if i'm able to receive this money i'll be able to do the x amount of revenue and then based on that you'll be able to tell okay this is the amount of money i need and this is exactly what i'm going to use the money for and then also um, having availability of off tickets agreement and possibly a purchase a purchase orders so at least you should be able to show that purchasing of maybe this particular equipment which is going to improve on my production to meet let's say 100,000 produce per day or 100,000 produce per week. I have agreement already available with um, other companies or um, other businesses who are going to uptake from me or have purchase orders from client or businesses that um, your company works with to be able to show that producing this amount, the availability of uptakers to pick these goods from you as a business. And then we are looking at at least having a bank statement of at least one year which deals with um, showing that these are your credit your credit your de uh, debit which would feed into your financial statement so this is one of the requirement that banks usually look at whereby they want to see that money flowing in and flowing out per month can support or at least at a, to some extent a, a particular percentage of your interest that will be approved and repaid month over month. So for instance, giving an example, let's say in each month, let's say 100,000 CDs come into your account. And then um, due to other uh, debits, um, let's say payment of salaries, payment of uh, raw materials and others, your net looks um, your net looks around 10,000 CDs. And then you're going to, let's say, assess a loan amount of, let's say 100,000 CDs, whereby your monthly repayment is about 5,000 cities or let's say 7,000 cities. So from there, the banks would realize that, okay, your net cash flow or your net um, your net uh, lines in your bank statement shows that you have the capacity to repay the loan. So these are things that um, banks will look forward to. Um, I think I, I, I further shared the checklist. So some of them are below. Um, for the federal requirements, so certificate of incorporation, certificate of business, um, certificate to commence business, company registration, full file, operating permit, um, team task clearance certificate, organizational chart, and then also board charter product, um, among others. So as you could see um, from from the list. So I think when when I complete, I have some. Um, there are some questions that um, I think. Um, it's in the comment section. I'll, I'll tackle all of that. So um, as I mentioned, so usage of funds, list of policies and procedures, among others. All right, so thank you very much. Um, so I would, I would like to take questions at this point. Um, as I, I could see, there are some, some questions that's already available. Um, so I will answer them quickly. So a question from Bauma Kweku. Um, so how can JABC help small businesses in this regard? Um, okay, so I would I'd like to read all the, um, all the questions. So one, how do startups feel within the first five years? Okay, so that's also another question that's in the comment section. Please mention that question. Okay, sure. Um, so I would like to tackle the second part, which is, why do startups fail within the first five years? There are a lot of factors that would allow for a business to fail um, in the first five years. And I think there have been um, analysis that have been done that out of 10 companies, about nine of them will fail um, in their first five years, or even sometimes even in their first year. 
One could be um, having, and I think I've mentioned most of them, not having a business focus could have a huge impact to you as a business. So for instance, you're doing too many things at the same time. So you're not able to even scale on your core product that may be able to allow you to grasp a business. So for instance, you're selling this, you're selling that, you're producing A, you're producing product B, and you're not having a clear understanding of even the market that these products are in. You may not be able to be that competitive for growth. So that may have an impact on you as a business owner. Also, not having a setup in terms of internal controls and bookkeeping. So even if, let's say, a cost, uh, your clients or yes, your employees are stealing from you, you are not able to really tell due to a poor internal control setup. You may have um, issues with cash, which is very key as a business to be able to grow or scale. And then also sometimes um, in terms of the management team and then also the entrepreneur. So there is the possibility that an entrepreneur can become worried when they are growing a business. Um, and so it's, it's important that as an entrepreneur, you need to build capacity to be able to withstand impact during your growth. So we know some businesses that were heavily impacted by COVID-19 and, you know, due to poor resilience from these entrepreneurs. And sometimes it's not really their fault because these things can come at you very hard. So this can have a huge impact on the entrepreneur. And then also sometimes having a poor succession plan could also have an impact on you for you to fail within the first five years, which can begin from, for instance, you started the business, the business has been good for the first three years. And then you may start seeing some decline uh, due to, let's say, a succession from maybe the person who was the CEO and started the business or the founder having to um, not being capable of executing that particular role, bringing in a new person could change the direction of the company and could lead a company to fail. So among um, others, as I've listed, so um, management, credibility, internal controls, and then also um, other things as I've mentioned. So that is, that is also um, some of the reasons why a company can fail within the first five years. Um, so the question on how can JABC help business, uh, small businesses in this regard? So as a firm and under the uh, MasterCard Foundation COVID-19 Resilience and Recovery Program, we support micro, small, and medium businesses in the services, as um, I have mentioned. So it deals with financial structuring, um, financial management, um, audit, internal controls, bookkeeping, financial policies, credit and risk management. So as you could see, so these are services we provide for businesses for free under the MasterCard Resilience and Recovery Program. All you need to do, and I think um, the link will be shared with us to be able to have access to register with us so that you can be under the program. And then we could give you all this support literally for free. So this presentation bring forth to light that beyond just having this training to bring to you the various things you need to do as an entrepreneurial business owner for micro, small and medium businesses. You can access some of these things literally for free and then be able to be on the right end in terms of being investment ready to be able to assess all the external capital you need for your business to grow and to easily scale. Um, thank you very much for joining. You can join us tomorrow at 11 as Mr. Ada Quick um, speaks on business development Follow us on all social media at JABC Ghana. And also you can follow us on Facebook at JABC Venture Capital. Um, it was amazing to have you. Thanks for joining. As I initially mentioned, my name is Lavin S.B. Cranton. Um, it's going to be a week long program from 24 to 29th of January. So you can join us each day. We will share the link with you on our social media for you to be able to join. And the training is going to present to you all the things you need to do as a business owner to define your business for this particular year. So thank you very much for your time. And we'll, we'll join you. We will join with you tomorrow to have the training on the business development. Thank you.
ಕಳ್ಕೊಂಡ್ಬಿಡ್ತೀನಿ 